Hi there, Director of Photography, Alec Watson. Today, I'm gonna to show you a couple of ways that I optimize skin in ACDC's Ultimate 2020. So this is part two of that photo shoot I did with my friend, photographer Manuela, who sat in as a fantastic model for us. I'm gonna go through and I'm going to optimize skin. There's a couple of different ways to do it. I thought I'd show you a few different directions that we can take this. So I'm gonna take this image here. I'm first gonna take it to the develop suite. The difference between the develop suite and the edit suite is develop is just a set of controls that works on the raw file. It's completely non-destructive. It's what's called, uh, when you're working with raw files, it makes a separate little kind of text file that gives the program instructions and says, do this with this file so it never touches your raw file. So before I take it into the edit suite, I always like to give it a little optimize in there first. So I'm a tiny bit underexposed. I'm gonna open up my exposure a tiny bit. We can see, I don't know if you can see for you there. I'm just starting to get maybe a little burn in on the skin that I don't want. So I take the highlights and I pull them back ever so slightly. I'll push the exposure a tiny bit more and a little bit back on the highlights. There we go, that is popping a little more how I'd like. I'm also gonna add a, a tiny bit of vibrance. Okay, the difference between vibrance and saturation, uh, vibrance will hit things that are not skin tones first before skin tone. Like, it'll obviously affect her skin tone. And she's also wearing makeup, so it's gonna grab the color in the makeup, but saturation kinda grabs everything simultaneously. If I'm just trying to push, say, her hair color, that's clearly not a skin tone, so it'll bring a little extra saturated color into her, into her hair before it touches her skin. There we go. I would say that is about right. So now if I, if I were to head back to manage, it'll ask me if I wanna save that. What it's doing is writing a little sidecar file. It doesn't ever write over my raw file. It just has a set of instructions. That set of instructions will show up if I go into the edit suite. I hope I made that clear. So I could do those same, thing, same set of things with lightning in the edit suite. It shows up exactly how, how I set it up, right? But I want any future use uh, that I'm, when I go back to the raw file to have that set of instructions anyway. So that's why I do those separately. Okay, I've got it in the edit suite. We're going to zoom in. So I click here. I'm gonna zoom in to 100%. Now we've got this little square here that I can use to move around. I did a video on optimizing uh, hair using uh, adjustment contrast adjustment layers, contrast curves. Uh, check that one out because that is a great one. Uh, and these two really go together to be able to take a photo to the next level. So if we go in really tight, everybody has skin problems when you go in really tight. Manuela has fantastic skin. I apologize, Manuela, if you're looking at this going, I can't believe he's zooming into my skin. So we'll look around and we see uh, some blemishes that are uh, hidden under the makeup and we don't notice at a distance. But if we wanna take this to the next level, we wanna go in and grab those. So one of the things that we can do is we can go to the repair tool. Before we do that though, what I wanna mention is that I always like to keep a master layer that's untouched. So that way, if you ever have to go back, uh, you can say undo, in, but undo only ever works in order. Uh, so if you have to undo something you did like 200 things ago because you didn't notice you did it, you always wanna keep an original round. So this I would rename as, I know I gotta type in real time, original, which I can never type in original. <laughs> I can't even speak and type at the same time. There we go, original. And so I won't touch that one now. That one is just there for me to go back to if I ever need to do anything. So this one is the one I am going to take the repair tool to. So there we go. I'm going to go and do healing. The size of this is adjusted by the scroller on my mouse. And so, or I can, I can do that here. And I want a fair amount of feathering on these repairs. So we'll make a pretty big feather and a quite a small adjustment. There we go, I'll right click on a smooth piece of skin and there we go. And I'll go through and heal these. Now what you'll notice is sometimes this works really nicely and sometimes it doesn't. 
And so those aren't really clearing my, my problem areas. So if we swap this out, and I'm, I'm showing you these for, for a reason because there's different ways of doing, of doing different things. If I go to a clone, that's gonna work really nicely when I find an area that's pretty much identical and smooth. So this area here, if I wanna correct that, it looks like this area here. So I sample the same area of skin and I click into there. That's going to make things disappear really easily. So the difference between say heal and clone, heal is going to take things out that have a very distinct uh, source problem. So here we go. Here's a dark little area. This would be a great job for a heal. Oh, I gotta clone the area. I'm gonna take it or mention, I've gotta tell it which area I'm taking it from. There we go. And where we've got a very distinct problem, here we go. There's, I, I, that might be a hair there from a haircut. We'll take sample this area with a right click and we heal that area. So heal is very good at doing things like that. Um, freckles, not that I like to take freckles out, but it's fantastic at that stuff. When you've got something that's softer, say this area here, heal doesn't work particularly well at doing that because it looks at the area around. And so that is the kind of area that I would go with a clone with. It should look like this area here. Right click for that area, go through. Okay, I'm gonna zip through and I will speed this all up so you can see what this looks like before and after. When we're finished, we click done and we pull back to full screen and we've gone through and we've done lots of little blemishes. So now what I like to do after I've done that is do the skin tune layer. So what skin tune does is it does softening of skin tone. And I don't wanna do that before I've done my blemish removal because basically it takes those areas and blurs them. So why would I want to blur a blemish? So I take the blemishes out first and next I go and I do a skin tune on this same layer. And what we do, we're gonna want, so we're gonna wanna zoom in again. This time not quite so tight, let's go 50%. So we want to see what we're doing. There we go. And we're going to add smoothing in and smooth, smooth, be a hint of glow, there we go. And we can click show previous to see what difference we're making. Now we can see that it's softening her eyes and I'm losing contrast in her eyes, but overall it's smoothing her skin tone. When we take our radius down a little bit and the, and the glow is not working for, my, for her skin, she's got that uh, awesome Latina skin and uh, often when, when you're doing a glow, it'll work on somebody who's you know really white and it'll give that fantastic vibrant look. But when you've got that olive Latina skin, I, I prefer to, to keep that awesome skin, skin color as it is. So a glow, probably not a good choice for her. Okay, there we go. That is softening the skin, but it's messing with say the eyelashes and the eye makeup. That's okay, I will show you why. So we're gonna click done on this. It's gonna go through and it's gonna apply that to our whole layer. So now, remember we kept that original around? Well, what we can do is we're gonna, we're gonna create a layer mask and then we're gonna paint black over those areas that we wanna keep that detail in. There we go, so there's, and through that eye makeup, so that eye makeup pops, so we don't end up with that softness through this area where we want to keep lots of detail. We'll go over those eyebrows too. And then let's head down to her lips to keep detail on her lips because it probably grabbed that. Let's head back out to full screen. 
And now we're gonna toggle this on and off, see if there's any other areas that are, nope. Everything looks good. It's very, it's very difficult when you're wide to see what the skin softening is doing. But in at 50%, again, move this little square up so we can see. We can turn this on and off and it is definitely softening up that shot. So now a last technique that's really awesome that I wanna use is I'm gonna take this layer I'm gonna make one more copy of the original, and I will show you why in a second. So let's duplicate our original layer, and then we're gonna take this copy, and we're going to merge it with our original copy. So now this is our skin-tuned layer. Then I'm gonna take this layer, and I am going to do a frequency separation. And what this does, this takes the, it's kind of, this is a description. It kind of takes the detail out. What ACDC Ultimate's gonna do is create two layers. One that's kind of a color layer that's gonna be a little bit blurry, and the other that's going to be a detail layer. That is this one, and we're gonna work on the detail layer. We can see a, a radius, and what we're looking for, it's subtle, but you can just see hair detail, and that is exactly what we're after on this one. Once we've got it, we click done. When we go back, we're gonna see that we now have two layers. We have an original copy and an original copy, high frequency, it's high frequency and low frequency. So when I turn this off, we get a blurred layer. When I turn this back on, it looks like normal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this high frequency layer and we are going to click the repair tool. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to clone out things that I don't like. So if I zoom in to 100%, get the hand tool, talk to the hand. Okay, down here, I have a hair that's running through her face. This would not clone out easily, but if we do it to this high frequency layer now, I click just to the right for my sample, and now I drag over top, <laughs> if I can be more coordinated. There we go. It is, this high frequency layer does a fantastic job of cloning things out and making them not very visible. Um, we've got some eyebrow hairs that, oops, right click up here to sample, run this through here to get control over Our hairs here. Here's a hair that would be very difficult to fix. We click here, clone that out. Fantastic. And then up here in her widow's peak, we'll go and clone out some small stray hairs that aren't really doing us any favors. And again, this would be really noticeable if you just hit clone on your main layer but when you're just doing it to a high frequency detail layer, it leaves all the information in, but basically blurs that detail. And it's a really handy technique. I'm gonna show you one more important thing that I use this technique for. So obviously there's, there's lots of little things that I go, oh, let, let's, let's get this one while I'm here. Perfect. There's lots of uses for this. One of the uses is to take out fine lines. Now pressure, I'm gonna turn this down because we wanna leave a little bit of detail here. I'm gonna make this bigger. But what we wanna do is, I'm just gonna literally soften these lines. Laugh lines are great, we don't, we don't wanna take them out. We're just gonna literally soften them. And then this is great around the eyes too. Um, of course, Manuel has not really got anything showing up around her eyes that I would deal with. Just these laugh lines. Laugh lines from laughter and a life well lived. That is fantastic. There you go. I will click done on this. We zoom back out. And there we have it. A couple of methods of skin retouching. So we went in, we got rid of blemishes first. Then we, we put a skin tune layer. And then to get rid of fine hairs and fine lines that don't clone very well, we use this high frequency pass method. And that's a fantastic way to get really well tuned skin and not have it look overly retouched. 
If you got something out of this video, please click like. If you wanna be notified when other videos are coming out, make sure you click subscribe and hit the little blue bell. Throw any comments or questions you've got down. I'm monitoring for comments. So if there's things you wanna learn about, let me know there. I will be all over it. In the meantime, get out, take some photos, and make the world a better, more beautiful place.